In the last several videos, we've mentioned Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. In this video, we'll go into a little bit more detail regarding the differences and what that means for your viscosity measurements. Newtonian fluids are fluids that have a viscosity independent of shear rate. These fluids, such as water, are common and can be accurately measured with many different types of viscometers, barring any evaporative or surface tension effects. As discussed earlier, for these fluids, simple tests in automatic mode are sufficient to characterize the samples as the specific shear rate of the test is not important. Now, non-Newtonian fluids behave differently. These are fluids with a viscosity dependent on the shear rate. That is to say, increasing the shear rate can reduce the viscosity, shear thinning, or increase the viscosity, shear thickening. This type of fluid requires a more detailed analysis to characterize fully. Shear thinning samples, in essence, extend the available shear rate range because your pressure no longer increases in direct correlation to shear rate. For example, let's say you test a 100 centipod sample at 100 reciprocal seconds and that is equivalent to 50% of full scale. You double the shear rate, expecting that to be your maximum, 100% full scale, but your viscosity drops down to 66 centipods. As a result, you only attain 66% of full scale. This means that the maximum shear rate you can attain with this sample is much higher than for a Newtonian fluid. The same goes in the opposite direction. The lower your shear rate, the higher your viscosity, extending your shear rate range in that direction as well. If you don't have a full understanding of your sample's shear thinning behavior, the only way to test across the full range is by trial and error. It is to say, you can keep increasing the shear rate until you truly reach the limits of the chip or instrument. Shear thickening samples are less common, but in essence will reduce your available shear rate range due to the opposite behavior. Be careful when increasing shear rates with a shear thickening sample. Increase the shear rate in small increments to avoid overpressuring the chip. Other than affecting the shear rate range, non-Newtonian samples also change how we want to analyze the data. For a Newtonian sample, the viscosity value displayed by the instrument is the true viscosity. No additional work is required. For a non-Newtonian sample, this viscosity value is the apparent viscosity. It will be consistent for this chip, but it may not match up with values obtained from rheometers. This is due to the flow profile exhibited in tubes by non-Newtonian fluids. Because the viscosity varies with the shear rate, we no longer see a steady parabolic flow profile and may instead see something like the flow pictured. To account for this changed behavior, we need to apply the weissenberg rabinovich correction factor. This correction factor requires viscosity values at a minimum of three different shear rates and the microvis control software. By exporting the microvis data into the control software, we can apply this correction factor. If you are using the microvis to perform comparative tests rather than test to a reference value, this may not be necessary. Join us in the next video where we discuss microvisc cleaning steps.